It's the show. Spiders laid eggs in my parsley, so I guess I'm throwing out the parsley. Or lighting it on fire. A few weeks back, before the show became a thing, I promised I was going to tell you about ADHD, and I started to do just that by giving you a rundown of the science behind ADHD. But I never followed up by telling you any of the lived experiences of having ADHD, which is very much an ADHD thing to do actually, so I'm actually demonstrating through examples, so you're welcome. This week though, I thought I'd give you something a bit more tangible. So here is side effect of ADHD number one, we have zero follow through. People with ADHD love making plans. We love committing to things, typically because we lack impulse control and everything sounds amazing all the time, but that's another video. We love to start projects. We pick up new hobbies, we accept responsibility for tasks during meetings, and then nothing happens. We come across as flakes, lazy, unmotivated. It just plain looks like we don't care. There are actually a bunch of reasons for this, and they all tie into the core symptoms of ADHD that I went over in my first video, which I'll hopefully remember to link to up in the square. First off, we might have plain forgotten about the thing. People with ADHD have basically no working memory capacity, and no internal trigger mechanisms to remind us that events are coming up, unless we physically see something which triggers that memory, and usually then it's too late because that happens in bed when you're running through the day's events, and suddenly you sit, bolt, upright, and you go, shit, I was meant to watch James play baseball this morning. If the thing is something like hanging out with you or going to a party or something, sometimes we can have all the energy in the world when we commit to going with you, but then by the time the thing rolls around, it's lost its shine and we used a lot of our mental energy navigating the people world already today and we're mentally tired and we're quite worried that we're going to do something embarrassing because we're tired and our impulse control is even worse when we're fatigued and we don't need a room of adults staring at us while we try to build a potato gem Burj Dubai. Then again, we might have just double booked ourselves because we forgot that we already had a thing booked tonight and we kinda agreed to go with those other people first. We're sorry. And if the thing is some kind of hobby or project or something, well, to be honest, we probably just got bored. It's very rare for me to hold a hobby for more than three months, which is, again, another topic I'll go deeper on in the future, but for now I'll just say that things don't hold their neato wowiness for us like they do for other people. Now, I'm always going to try to give you advice for helping out at the end of these, so if you want to help us with this particular issue, there are a couple of tactics you can use. First, send us some kind of reminder about things that are happening. Emails, text messages, calendar invites, whatever. Don't let us forget. You're not being annoying, you're being helpful. Second, when we commit to something, don't just let us say yes right away. Ask us follow-up questions like, are you sure you have nothing else planned? And listen to how quickly we answer. Fast is bad in this case. You can combine these two tactics by asking us gently if we're still available on the day, too. My favourite texts are, are you still up for the thing tonight? It's okay to say no. Do you have any other tactics you think might be useful? Let's discuss it more in the comments. This is free advertising trampoline. You should send me gelato. This is really good actually. Send me your cutest gelato boy. I've spent a lot of time travelling between dimensions. From Narnia, to Sliders, to A Link Between Worlds, to Bioshock Infinite, to Rick and Morty, to... Well, you get the idea. The opportunity to see what life is like in a different reality has, for reasons that are probably deeper than I'm willing to admit, always been something that's called to me. At the very least, the ability to hop between realities is something I'm more than happy to exploit. So understandably, I was pretty keen when the opportunity to review this week's game came up. It's Dimension Jump. Created by Redpoint Games and available now on PC, Dimension Jump is a 2D precision platformer where the main mechanic doesn't just involve jumping from platform to platform, but between two parallel dimensions as well. 
Your aim in each level is to get a nameless bumpy red cube to the green goal zone by moving about, jumping, and shifting between two dimensions that are similar but which have vital differences, such as the placement of walls and platforms, or the existence of hazards and enemies that you need to exploit to reach your destination. There's not really any story behind what you're doing, which isn't a huge detractor, but it would help for me at least, with motivation if I had a reasoning behind just winning. Accessibility wise, Dimension Jump has some hits and some misses. Having said that, I want to preface this as always with the fact that I bring these things up so that devs can do better. None of these things are reasons why nobody should buy a game, but they might be reasons why some specific people shouldn't buy it because, well, they just might inhibit gameplay too much. Starting off with a positive, the controller support for Dimension Jump is great. The default button mapping is intuitive, and regardless of the control method you choose, you're offered enough precision to navigate the stages. It's just unfortunate that there isn't any way to remap the controls away from the default, because even though they are quite simple, there is the potential that they might not be suitable. Another potential issue for players is the usage of colour and the lack of a colour blindness mode. The use of red rectangles for hazards and green rectangles for the goal zone could be definitely a source of frustration for those with some form of red-green colour blindness. The specific shades of red and green show up as orange and yellow, respectively, and are just a little too similar for comfort. Now, don't get me wrong, these issues are important, yes, but they aren't insurmountable, and I really hope that the devs address them in future updates. What's also quite nice is just how much content you're getting with Dimension Jump. There's 90 base stages with a good range of difficulty, but you'd be mistaken if you thought that once you'd beaten those, the game is over. Each stage has a time attack mode, with global leaderboards to encourage you to not only better yourself, but to crush everyone else as well. And you're not just limited to the devs stages either, as there is a level builder component that lets you not only make your own challenges, but play through the creations of others as well. For someone with ADHD, the near infinite amount of content here is great, and it means that I can put the game down for a few days, or a few weeks, take a break, and when I come back to it, there'll be new stuff waiting for me. If you're into precision platformers, and aside, if you are, you must have the patience of a saint, and you want one with a mechanic that is typically reserved for games of a different genre, then you should check out Dimension Jump. It's about 15 US dollars on Steam right now, which might be a bit pricey for some, but I still think that overall, the game is worth giving a look. Slim Shady, is it really you? Nope, it's the Muppets. <laughs> 